good looking kid. Because I take after mom. Well, I'll try to avoid your face. Round one, fight. <laughs> Here's Johnny. Johnny Cage wins. Fatality. Well, he didn't hit her face. Mortal Kombat X was developed by NetherRealm Studios and released on April 14th, 2015 for the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC, with PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 ports coming in the near future. MKX is a sequel to 2011's Mortal Kombat, and takes multiple cues from NetherRealm's previous game, Injustice. The Good MKX follows in its predecessor's footsteps of attempting to revive Mortal Kombat as a seriously mechanically deep fighter while retaining all the elements that casual fans loved and it does a damn fine job at it too. Mortal Kombat X has hands down the best combat of any game in the series. The speed of the fights have been increased, and matches have a much nicer flow. The additional variations of each character change up the game immensely. Each character has three different variation types. They grant them special abilities and powers only found in said variations. These help incentivize the player to try a character they might not have tried before. It also adds some variations, no pun intended, in the matches where both opponents are playing as the same character. Multiple times I've been paired up with an enemy who's using the same character as I, but the variations we chose were different. Because of this, our fighting styles were completely different. Each match was really refreshing and fun. The variations also lead to each character having viable use in competition. If a character you're playing has a bad matchup against another character, you can change your variation to combat that character. If you're playing, say, Aaron Black and using the Outlaw variation, and you want to zone a rushdown character, you can switch to Marksman. Features like this are where MKX really shines. Competitive players have enough to sink their teeth into, but casual fans can also mess around with these new features and have fun. Competition seems to be an important part of the game design in Mortal Kombat X. The animations in MKX are in stark contrast to the stiffness found in MK9. The smoother, quicker animations help the game move around at a much faster pace and really help the game be more interesting to watch. NetherRealm has also offered an extensive amount of information for competitive players. Looking at your moves list doesn't just tell you the inputs for a move or string, it also tells you the damage, where it hits, and even the frame data. You can even double tap a button in sequence to perform strings instead of hitting the buttons one after the other. This is especially important as many of the follow-up strings are unsafe, and players need to visually hit confirm them before continuing the combo. The game manages to do all this without alienating longtime casual fans. The game still has delightfully gory fatalities and brutalities. Characters are still goofy and entertaining as always. You can really see the different personalities shine in the pre-fight banter. The game is still absolutely Mortal Kombat, but it has grown up mechanically. The crypt has also been overhauled and expanded upon. Now it functions as a mini dungeon crawler game, as a way to spend the in-game coins you earn. While these gameplay improvements are good, they can't help the game get away from... The bad. The amount of content in MKX was something I found myself disappointed by. The challenge tower is gone and replaced with living towers. These towers are server-side generated towers that refresh periodically. Multiple times though, the servers have gone down, so I was unable to play these towers. Story mode makes a return to the game, and while still enjoyable, I finished it in two sessions. Depending on your skill level, the story can be anywhere from three to four hours. That's about half the length of Mortal Kombat 9's story. The final story battle was anticlimactic, and not very difficult, even on the harder difficulties. The skip fight feature in the story would have been fine if it was voluntary, but sometimes I quit the story at the beginning of a chapter or fight, when I had returned, I had found that the game had skipped the fight for me without asking if I wanted to or not. To add to that, if you want to replay a chapter or experience the fight that you missed, it resets your story progress to the beginning of that chapter. The quick time events present in the story are a bore to watch and are just padding before the fights. Completing the QTE successfully adds nothing to the fight. Many times I was watching a fight play out between two characters through quick time events when I simply could have been fighting the character. There are also characters in the story that you fight such as Baraka and Rain that you aren't able to play as and aren't even listed as upcoming DLC. Speaking of the DLC, the amount of DLC this game has is egregious. 
The game itself costs $60 USD, and the combat pack adds 5 characters for $30 USD, half the price of the main game. Add to it the DLC to unlock all the crypt content for $20 USD, and you got a grand total of $150. Not to mention, the iconic characters like Goro are locked behind a paywall. Scrolling over an iconic character and seeing Press X to Purchase is not something that sits right with me. The PC port of MKX is also absolutely broken. MKX was ported to PC by High Voltage Software, who are also in charge of the PS3 and 360 ports. The game on PC has frame rate drops left and right and a critical memory leak. Many of the stages have broken lighting and graphics. The port is a huge mess and should be avoided until it's fixed. The game frequently has large patches going anywhere from 10 to 15 gigabytes in size. The PC port certainly isn't pretty, so I suppose it's time to talk about The Ugly, where I discuss the game's graphics. Mortal Kombat X has some very nice graphics. The character models are a huge improvement on Mortal Kombat 9's, and the new characters are nicely designed. Returning characters get new redesigns that suit them well. The textures look nice, and some of the stages are really impressive to look at. Many of the stages have neat lighting effects and particle effects. These do a lot to add to the environment. The game runs at a buttery smooth 60 frames per second, as any fighting game should. The game also runs at 1080p natively, which is quite nice. Unless, of course, you're playing the PC version. Stay away. Mortal Kombat X is a fantastic game for fighting game fans and casual fans of the Mortal Kombat series. If you are a casual fan of the MK series, you might not get as much out of this iteration as you did with MK9. But if you want something to sink your teeth into, learn, and absorb yourself into, Mortal Kombat X could be that game. If you're on PC, stay away until it's fixed, or just pick up the PS4 or Xbox One version. Mortal Kombat X gets a mocap out of 10.